Thank you for staying with us. Abu Chipita Ugu is the chief executive officer at Chocolate City. He's a respected professional in the Nigerian and African music industry as well as the wider creative sector. He got his start in the music industry in 2008, working as an engineer and producer on a number of projects in Chalk City. He went on to manage one of Africa's most prominent uh, music art, MI Abaga, for over a decade. It's great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, know, you for having me. We're showed as entertainment based, and we get to have all the stars, the musicians, and all of that. But we don't get to see so much of you guys, the ones who make things happen behind the scenes. So it's quite. Um, uh, it's quite a pleasure to have you here this morning. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, but before we talk into, uh, go into the business of um, of heading a, a record label, yeah. let's talk about how you came up to become the you know yeah. the CEO of Chocolate City. How did it start for you? Talk to us about your journey. Yeah, I, I was a sound engineer for a long time. Okay. I, started, I, I, I always tell people the story. I started engineering by looking, by watching, and by seeing. watching. Yeah, I think when I was 16, 17, Funny enough, I used to be a roadside mechanic. Wow. Then I just wanted more. So wow. Then I was just like, oh, what do I do more? Then there was a studio where the young people always gravitated towards. Mm. And I just showed up. Said, oh, I want to learn. And then it was just like, oh, there's no space. I was just, don't worry, I'll clean. So I showed up, started sweeping, then started learning. Engineering. Started sweeping the studio. That's how I started. Oh, wow. Then right. from there, came to Lagos, moved to Lagos, got a job was as an engineer, so I used to mm. produce radio programs. Okay. For people, I think, yes, there was a new radio station that popped at that time. Mm. We used to produce like radio shows, a lot of countdown shows. Okay. And that's how I started. I had worked with MI for a long time. Okay. I think then worked on the video whiskey project that year. Almost everything that sort of came out during that time frame. What did they see in you, and how did you become? I mean, what was it that made you that made you stand out in such a way that you became the CEO of Chocolate City? So, it's, I think it's all about value. Mm. And that for me, earlier on, I understand that this is just about value. The life is all about value. Us having okay. conversation will transact value from one face from to one another. Face to that. I like that. And I just like that. being in the ecosystem for a long time. Okay, so I understand how we don't preach. that. I understand that. <sighs> How do I create value for all stakeholders involved? Involved. Now, talking about yeah. that value you create, what is the daily routine of a CEO of a record label? What does that job entail? Mm. So I think people see the glam. They don't understand the people's management you have to manage. Mm. They don't understand the social media is a huge part of it. They have to keep up the image for... Because people see... Like, people, they say you're good as your last job. So your job mm. is mainly the artist. Mm. So now it's like, how do you present this artist to the people. Hmm. And now when this, this generation, you're just not, I was telling someone, you just, it's not about music we're selling anymore, it's top of mind. So how do I make sure anytime you look at your phone, like I have a talent that is in the conversation. And then the younger people, it's hard to match up with them because the values I knew growing up is different from the from values. From what values that they know. have now. So you always have to bridge the gap. Hmm. So it's like a constant search between bridging the gap and then communicating to them the language they understand. Mm. In so doing, they create value for the talent. Every stakeholder involved, your shareholders, we have investors, the investors, True. the artists again, you have to create. Yeah. And then in so doing that, you have to create systems and structure. Because you know this artist might come and go. You know, talking yeah. about that come and go, and most times when we hear about record label bosses, it's always when there's a most, uh, it's mostly associated with contract disputes. Yeah. The artist is breaking his contract. Oh, uh, the, 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 the record label gave me a contract that is slavish and all of that. It happens quite a lot. Yeah. What are the challenges as a record label boss that you face when it comes to artists and contracts, giving mm. them contracts, and how, you know, the, with the whole disputes that come in to play whenever, whenever they would want to break mm. away from these contracts? I think, again, education and communication is key. So when you, you have to understand. And when, so when I talk about communication, I think communication is a two-way street. Mm. And again, I always tell people that knowledge is progressive. Mm. So what an artist understand yesterday is different from what they understand today. And just take a normal scenario, an artist makes, you meet an artist, he doesn't even have 5,000 there. In, in the span of two years, he gets to a point where he makes 2 million a, a week. In a normal structured environment, for you to move from 100K to 2 million is like about 10 years of work. Mm. So you've built the discipline, you've built the culture, you've known, okay, this is how I'm going to do. 
you know the certain things that are possible, you know every action has consequences. Mm. But now you've moved to this side where the money just shows up. Mm. And you feel like, no, I can change the wheel. So then there's an agreement normally from the record level and the talent. Where, okay, we've agreed. Then the artists get to a point where they want more. Mm. So sometimes it could be the labor's fault because I've seen labor take advantage of the artists. Okay, it does happen. It does happen Okay, sometimes. all right. But sometimes I've seen where the artist just wants more. Mm. And the labor can't give more at that, at that particular at that point, point in time. And then it's in business, sometimes you're just like, it might not seem rosy, but let's build the stream. Mm. And again, with the artists, they get to a point where people start offering them times 10 of what you can of offer. Of what you can offer. Okay. So at that point, it's like, do you have, do you let them go? Or do you fight? <laughs> or is it about ego? Now, is it about business? Is it about, again, back to value? Mm. So if I always tell people, define what the price is, define what your value. So when we get to that stage, I just let you know this is what my price is. Wonderful. And when mm -hmm. you're willing to buy or find me different value, then I'm like, okay, let's go. Wonderful. Now let's talk about Chocolate City as a unique entity. You know, um, the Chuck Boys, there was an era when the Chocolate City was, you know, had the Chuck Boys. There was quite a lot about them making all the bars and then issues and all of that and all of that. Um, recently, you know, it's uh, labels generally. Mm. You know, I was talking to someone and they were like, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't hear so much of uh, labels as we used to, let's say 10 years back, when, you know, the labels at times are even more prominent than the artists, yeah. you know, the, the, the label names, you know, stuff. But nowadays it's like the labels, like everybody maybe just more concerned about the heat. You don't, the labels are not, are not as prominent as they used to be. Uh, what would you have to say about that? I think it's evolution. Mm. In everything, you have to grow. So there's a point where it was chocolate City forefront, it was Mohit forefront, it was this. Mm, yeah. So now there's an evolution where now you have, let's say, MI. So let me give you an example. This same chocolate City, we had Jeremiah Gang showed up. Mm. We had MI, MI, we had Jesse, we have Ice Prince. Mm. After Ice Prince, we had Victoria Kimani mm. showed up. We had Coca, we have Dice, we have Down to. Every two years, we sort of have an, somebody that shows up. Yeah, that shows up. So now we have uh, Black Bones. Mm. Before Black Bones, there was Dice. So there's always somebody. We've always been consistent. In the, but it's just that the communication sort of changed. So we moved from communicating an artist to now. So okay. we had 100 um, Black Bones was signed into. Okay. Chocolate City property. Property, all right. So we're building. So for example, if I tell you, so, yeah, in the, okay. Oh, because mm. the imprint, a different imprint. All under the same, the on that, the of, same umbrella, yeah. but both of them might never meet mm, or have anything to do with Any each other. interaction with each other. You know, so, so you, now with the record label, you have to evolve to the point where it's content and it's numbers. Mm. So I was telling people that when you have a conversation with people like Sony, when they come to the market, they come with five million catalog songs. Mm. The only way you can grow is how do you start acquiring other labels that sub labels that could that you build the numbers. So Chocolate City in a great year can do 100 content a year. Okay. But the, the way I could scale is have 10 Chocolate Cities on the house. All right. That's, that has been the evolution. I like that. Okay. You know, someone says if you don't evolve, you die. Yes. You know, okay, but let's, let's look forward. What, what projects do Chocolate City have on hand? What can people uh, yeah. look out for? Fans of Chocolate City, now that's a name that a number of people still yeah. hold there. You know, it rings a bell and it holds, it, 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 it holds something for people. What can they look out for? What to, to expect? F first talent I have, I always tell people now, we all about creating content that provokes. Okay. Provokes whatever we're going to create. So we have Black Bones here. He mm -hmm. had an album a month ago. Okay. We have like a number one. Okay. We have a number one album mm. in uh, Nigeria. We had the number one single in Africa. Okay. And then I have MI's album is coming soon. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. We're looking forward to that one. Yes. It's and we have other, other project. Wonderful. Uh, this is wishing you the best. And uh, okay. there, there's a tenure, right? How long have you been there? How, how long do you have? How long do you have to go? Four months. Okay. Uh, it's about eight months. About okay. two years. So All I right. still have much. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Uh, but you, this is wishing you the best. And uh, thank you. See you topmost. Okay? Thank you. All thank right. You we have something for you. But then, hey, come on. Let's check out this video. And of course, uh, the Chuck Boss is going to have something. Uh, is it chocolate? No, but we'll get to check out what's in the kitchen. But check out this video. I have yep. to say the industry has changed. Yes, though. indeed it wow. has. Still got the Chuck City boss mm -hmm. in here. Hey, <laughs> Gucci, you. good to have you here. So when Thank you're you. not doing all the CEO ness, what are you doing? It depends. It depends on the day. Mm. Mm. So I, 
I run before this part of the job I didn't chocolate say I run an agency Ooh. okay called being creative and nice. we do about 200 activations a year so oh, that's, that's busy. beautiful and then I try to keep fit by playing polo. I like animals. I love animals. So yeah, I have all the big boys polo. <laughs> Not really. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll warn you about that though, because horses have a mind of their own. Don't trust them.